Hi knitters, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I'm your host, Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls, and I'm so glad to be back. Um, I know this episode is late. Uh, if you guys didn't see on my Instagram stories, I broke out in a weird, um, it looked like an allergic reaction, it was hives. Um, I suspect it was mainly due to stress though. Um, anyway, so I looked just monstrous, so I didn't want to record an episode. Um, so thank you guys for your patience. Uh, in the extra week that I took off, I got some more knitting done. I have lots of things to talk about. Uh, my goodness. Um, first things first, what I'm wearing, because I know I'll forget to talk about it. This is the Malwina by Verp and Rose. Um, this is her, I think, first sweater design, which is crazy if you think about it, because it's so lovely. Um, this one is in the Wandering Flock in Silver Fox. Uh, that's the main color. I held it double with a strand of uh, Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair. And that was in the colorway Cloud I talked about, you guys. Um, so this is the big dramatic lace sleeve that I was telling you guys about. And I love it. It is everything that I wanted and more. The thing to note is I, so I followed the, the pattern on the sleeves. I'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, so I followed the pattern on the sleeves, including the length you knit to um, past sleeve separation until you start the lace motif, forgetting that I have super short arms for a normal human being <laughs> of adult age. So I should have shortened it by at least two inches and I didn't. So I had to stop on the lace chart on row 20, 39, 29. Um, basically I had 10 more rows of lace to do to do the full design. And um, I didn't, I obviously didn't want to rip out and, you know, go back. So I just kept going. I cut it off uh, at the same point on both sleeves and they are still quite cute. I really like them. I have plans already for another one. Um, this is my winter version, I like to say, because it's big and chonky. Uh, this, the main color, their main yarn is DK held with the mohair. So it comes across kind of like a worsted. Um, it was originally intended for an Aran, but I think that would be way too thick for me right now. Salt Lake has actually warmed up considerably, um, very quickly, in fact. So I, I want a spring version. Um, I'm planning on using this guy, the Explorer Knits Untamed in DK that I showed you guys in my last episode. So that's what I'm planning on using it for. I think it'll be lovely. Um, and the only changes that I'll make other than the doing the lace chart properly and shortening the sleeves is I did the raglan increases with the yarn overs just done normally. So you get that little eyelet look. Hers originally, you don't do an eyelet. You do with the yarn overs, you increase with yarn overs, but then you knit through the back loop so that it closes the hole. And I like the eyelet look personally, but seeing other people's samples of tests, I really, I was like, I should do the original version too. So that one, the spring version that I'll eventually make. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that one I will do the regular as written. And uh, I have never ever knit a pattern twice for myself. I used to make, I used to make my mom and I matching um, sweaters. So that's the only time I would knit a pattern twice, but it wasn't ever like something I would wear again you know, in another version. So I think it's high praise to Vert and Rose that I w actually, not even I'm considering, like I am planning on making another one um, just for me instead of my mom. Um, but on the subject of Malwina, and again, all the makers, designers, and dyers will be linked in the description below, as well as uh, Vert and Rose was so generous and has offered my viewers and Instagram followers a 20% discount code. Um, it's gonna be in the description below, as well as the links to both the Ravelry page and the Etsy page for the pattern, because I know that Ravelry isn't accessible for some people. So yes, there's an Etsy version and the Ravelry version pattern code will work on both. I'm really excited to share with you guys. And again, description below for that 20% off code for this gorgeous pattern. And like, I love this thing. It's so dramatic and feminine and everything I love. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that's the Malina. It's quite warm right now. Cause like I said, Salt Lake warmed up so fast, 
so fast. Oh gosh. Like it was snowing just a week and a half ago, maybe a week ago. And now it's, you know, like 60, like 75 degrees yesterday, today. It's, it's crazy. Crazy. Oh yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's, uh, what I am wearing. Then I'll get into makes. I know I'm switching up the order a little bit, but I just have a lot to show you guys and I want to clear my brain of the space, okay? So a finished make, I have yet to get finished object photos for it, is the Dear Duomo test knit for Sunhee Knits. So Sunhee, she's another Korean woman, so that's why I say her name that way. It's the correct Korean pronunciation. Um, it's her first written sweater design and I have been, so she was, uh, she worked up uh, her first sample. She's done three samples in this. Um, and she worked her up her first one and I was like, I'm obsessed. Where is that pattern? Like, how do I get it? Because the way it fit on her was so flattering. Um, and then I watched her knit her second sample and I'm like, when is this girl gonna write this pattern? Because I need it. And she did finally. And I was lucky enough to get in the test knit and I'm so excited. So this one is knit bottom up which I normally don't like bottom up sweaters because you don't, for many reasons, you don't get to try it on first off. And two, there's no pretty way to take a progress photo of a bottom up sweater. And like, I could take a photo, you know, but like, it, it just doesn't look pretty like a top down does. It doesn't, anyway, that's just my personal thing. So yeah, so it works bottom up. There's side shaping to increase. So the, the ribbing is quite dramatic. It's like three and a half inches on the bottom and it increases slightly up the body. And then of course it's a drop shoulder. So you work separately front and back. Um, the folded over neckband, I kind of I kind of messed up you guys. I did, I, I don't know how, this is the first time I've ever messed up on a folded over neckband. It ends up, a, it end, end, ended up a little bit skewed on the side right here but like I have long hair and my long hair usually covers stuff so I'm I'm gonna just roll with it I'm not gonna fix it okay so the yarn is Hawari Bazaar sugar cookies and I'm obsessed with it I have actually been saving this uh for two years now because I ordered this yarn and I was so in love and I didn't know what to use it for and I'm really glad I used it for this because I think the simple stock in it really shows off the gorgeous little speckles I love it and I've tried it on. It's super flattering and comfortable and I think it's just going to be one of those everyday pieces that I just go back to again and again. There is um, a faux seam added by with a purl stitch but honestly it's so not noticeable to me um, wearing it and making it like it just isn't noticeable that you could skip that step honestly. Um, the shoulders are joined with three needle bind off which is my preferred joining shoulder method if I have to three needle bind off is where it's at um, because I will not mess with mattress stitch, any stitch, no, no seaming, no seaming in my household. This is as close as I get. Um, yeah, so again, love this. Uh, it's gonna come out sometime in late April, I think. I'll let you guys know the updated date when I have it. Um, but again, if you follow me on Instagram, I let you know when the release is. I'm much more reliable on Instagram, honestly. Okay, another project I have going is this guy. Okay, so this is the souffle tea or souffle top, souffle tea, souffle tea um, <laughs> by Penrose Knits. And I've talked about it before and I'm so close to finishing. I like, I got really, monogamous on the Singhi Knits one, the Duo, the Dear Duomo that I just showed you. I got really like hyper-focused on it. So I just sat with it beginning to end and didn't work on anything else, which is not normal for me because I tend to switch around in my thinking, um, especially in my knitting. And um, so I've neglected this for a long time, but I am obsessed, uh, literally obsessed. First off, this is the first time I've ever done this kind of folded over hem on the bottom hem. I've done it on the neckline plenty, but this was the first time on the bottom hem. And it was a little bit tedious, but it was so worth it because I think it looks really lovely. And of course, after I block it, it'll lay more flat. Right now it tends to want to flip up, um, but yeah. So this yarn is from Cake Woolco and it's the colorway Lovely. And it's this gorgeous soft blush 
it looks more pink in, in real life than on the screen that I'm seeing right now but I am so obsessed. I already have a finished object photo shoot planned for it and it's gonna be perfect. I'm choosing to do um, bracelet length sleeves. So I'm just about a half inch away before I wanna do the dramatic decrease. So it is gonna have like that puffy sleeve look that I love, like this guy. Um, it is gonna have the puffy sleeve look, but it's not gonna be full length. It's gonna be bracelet length. And um, I did choose to do cropped length on the body. Um, it's because I'm planning to wear it specifically with this skirt and guys it's gonna blow you away it's gonna blow you away okay um but yeah so love this i have to sew on the little button that goes on the back there's a little keyhole detail which i think is so cute and i have a safety pin holding it right now because like i wanted to show you the keyhole without it flapping around without the button um but yeah this is again the souffle tee and i love it i love it i i love how dramatic the ruffle is i really i'm just obsessed yeah um, so excited for that. Then I've started on something for Nidosophy or Jamie. Um, I think it's Jamie Hoffman. Sorry, I'm really bad with the names. So this sweater is called, it's going to be called, um, I think it's, uh, Happy Blues. And it's basically just going to have butterflies all over it. It's color work, fingering weight. And I don't have a lot to show you. I literally just started the color work this morning. Um, so the, these are the very tips of the butterfly wings and they go all around. Um, I have not worked a fingering weight sweater in a long time. Um, I mean, I guess the souffle tee, two strands of my hair held together does count as fingering weight, but like fingering weight by itself, I. I you know, it's been a while, it's been a while. And yes, it takes forever, especially because this is a folded over neckband. So I felt like the ribbing took a year to do, but um, I forgot also how good fingering weight sweaters feel. Like the drape of it is really lovely. The stitch definition is really lovely. Um, uh, yeah, I, in the year 2020, that's the year I knit 23 sweaters and 19 of those were in fingering weight, um, which is a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and that's because I lived in Austin, at least for part of 2020, you know, it was a weird year. But anyway, yeah, so I lived in Austin. It was very hot there. You could, you could not wear a thick sweater, maybe for like two weeks out of the year, but that was it. So fingering weight was really my thing. And um, so, after 2020, when I moved here, I was like, oh, I need thick guys. I need thick boys, chunky boys. So I've pivoted to making thick sweaters. And now I, I just forgot how much I love the feel of stockinette on fingering weight. Anyway, that was my tangent. Uh, really quickly before I forget the yarns, um, this is Owen Mills. I got this as a gift from my friend Megan Kimchi and Co. And it's actually a yak silk blend and um it's really lovely so lovely um i'm very lucky that i have such good friends who will give me stuff like this as presents and um this is knox yarn co so knox yarn co was really big um when indie dyeing first became really uh strong and she kind of took, took a step back uh, especially after her child was born there are a lot of dyers like that, and, and I, I get it, I get it. Um, but yeah, so Knox Yarnco took a step back and she started dying again last, last, last year. Um, she kind of stepped back again, and that, again, it's fine, but um, I love this colorway. It's called Snowdrift, and it's this white cream with yellow overtones, or undertones? I don't actually know the difference. I should ask somebody. Anyway, but um, there's speckles throughout and you can see in the stockinette, there's still speckling, but enough contrast from the contrast color. And if you can see the contrast color, there's only two rows of it. <laughs> yeah, so again, uh, I just started it. It's the butterfly motif. I'm really excited because I've never actually been super into um, butterflies, which is kind of strange thinking like how ultra feminine I am that I've never been like butterflies, you know? Um, but yeah, 
So on the subject of fingering weight yarn that I was just rambling about, um, I have a lot of fingering weight yarn. Like the majority of my stash behind me, well, not anymore, but it used to be a lot of fingering weight yarn. And the reason it's not anymore is because in my D stashes, I've done like 40 stashes now, maybe, maybe, maybe four. Definitely three, maybe four. But anyway, I've done a bunch of D stashes. And um, so for those of you who aren't familiar, a D stash is exactly what it sounds like. I'm trying to remove things from my stash. And generally the way people do it, if they're not going to donate it, um, if you have nicer stuff, it doesn't make sense to, um, I mean, you could, you could, but like, I have a lot of indie dyed yarn, pretty much all indie dyed yarn. And I didn't want to just give it away. I wanted to, you know, try and recoup the cost of getting it. So, um, I have a D stash account and I announce on my main Instagram page, our own nits and pearls, like when I'm going to do a D stash and then I upload it all at once. Kind of like a shop update, except it's a D stash and it's just first dibs. I have a set price. I don't do bidding. That would just be way too much of a headache. Yeah. So it's just whoever's first gets it. And um, the majority of that was fingering weight. So now my stash is pretty, I would say even keeled between DK and fingering and mohair and all that. Um, which I like having a well-rounded stash, especially because I live somewhere, somewhere so temperate, you know, like the seasons definitely mean something instead of Austin where spring is one or two days and fall is maybe two days and winter is three weeks and then it's summer the rest of the time. Um, but here it's very seasonal. So I need a wide range of sweaters, of types of sweaters, thickness of sweaters. And um, so that's kind of been the conundrum I've been left with. Like I love fingering weight sweaters, I do, but I don't need a ton. I don't need the majority of my wardrobe to be it. And also I knit at such a pace now where I'm like, I don't really want to sit down with a fingering weight sweater for two weeks, every two weeks. And just, you know, like for me to knit up my stash, I would have had to do like a hundred fingering white sweaters. And that does not sound super enjoyable, especially if you have the mentality of I have to do it rather than, oh, I want to really make this. So that was my thing. Like my stash was giving me a source of stress instead of happiness. And that's not what I want um, my hobby to be. So uh, I, th I mentioned in one of my videos in passing, like, oh yeah, marling. Um, I'll talk about that in another episode, I guess. And I never really touched back on it. So my idea with marling is, um, or yeah, so I'm going to hold a bunch of yarns together to create one cohesive fabric. And the way that I've strategized is I, I want to pick one cohesive, uh, thread running through it, thread in a rhetorical sense. So this is, these are the two sets that I have in mind. If I can pick up 16s without dropping them. Okay. So these are the two sets I have in mind. And I think you'll be able to see in an instant what I'm talking about when I say there has to be a recurring thematic element to it. So I'll talk about this one first since that's the one I held up. So this one, obviously the overarching thing I think is this undertone of purpley pink. Um, these two yarns, this again is Knox yarn. Um, this is the glory and the dream. And this is her flora base. And I was really excited about this one because it's 20% mohair, 55% merino, and 25% nylon, which is not a base that I've worked with before. Um, this is the kinetic knitter. And uh, the kinetic knitter's mohair base. Uh, this is the colorway love spell. Love spell. It's really pretty. I really love this. And this is from Palmer Yarn Co. So Palmer Yarn Co, um, this is the colorway Smarties and it's just um, on her uh, MCN base. So 80, 10, 10 Merino cashmere nylon. And this was her 2021 February color. Um, she does colorways of the month and I requested that she dye up a sweater quantity of this on her MCN fingering base. And that's the colorway Smarties again, and I really love it. But again, I was in the position where I'm like, I don't really want to knit a fingering weight sweater anymore. 
Um, I know I'm working on one now, but like I don't want to just do finger joint sweaters. So I wanted to use up a whole bunch at once, you know, one fell swoop. And also I really needed to make room in my shelves after Portland. Uh, yeah, so there were many reasons why I had to do this. But I also think that these yarns do go really well together. Um, the colorways just blend well together in a way that I think the the resulting fabric. And once I start projects on this, I will show you guys, but I strongly suspect that the knit up fabric will look very cohesive and very lovely. Um, and I'm a little sad that, because I always fall into the trap of going like, oh, but this colorway is so beautiful. I want it to, you know, stand on its own. And I understand that. I say it all the time. And there are definitely like, I'm really sad that this base is going to be combined with other bases so it doesn't get to shine on its own. I get it. But my point is that I'm trying to use up some stuff and breathe some new life in my shelves and give them some breathing room. Like, these guys were crushed for a hot minute, okay? So, yeah. It's not gonna, it's not a thing of sadness that they're not gonna stand on their own. It's that all these yarns separately are amazing and together they'll be even better. So that's what I'm going with. And I have three skeins of each of these, so it's gonna be a chunky boy. Um, I'll probably have leftovers, and people have asked me what I do with my leftovers. Generally, I'll put them in my D's dashes. Yeah. Um, that's what I did for the leftover skein of the Wandering Flock MC and DK that I had from Melina, actually. I put it in my D stash. And um, if you are waiting on a D stash uh, delivery, I'm going to the post office after I record this video, so please be patient with me. Okay, then my next combo sweater idea is this one. So this one, I think you'll, it's a little bit more involved because with this one, my idea is that I'll hold the yarns, each color, double or triple, depending on which pattern I decide to go with, how chunky I want it to be, etc. But eventually it's going to um, fade into each other. And I think you'll understand why. This one obviously has yellow tones in it. It also has pink. And the reason I, I'm not gonna hold it uh, by itself, and again, this is, um, I've not, again, I didn't say it. But I've shown it to you guys before. This is from Suburban Stitcher. This was her uh, one of a kind colorway and it was very springy and very beautiful, but there is a bit more green to it than I normally would wear. Um, and I don't think it'll suit my skin very well, you see? So I think the fade is the best option. And um, this green speckles that you see in this one from Hypothesis Yarns, this is her colorway Naturalist. I believe I've also shown this to you guys. But the green speckles and yellow tones or yellow variegation and pink base fades very well into this guy from the Red Pansy. And this is the colorway Lemon Blossom. Um, she gifted this to me as my birthday present last year. And I love it so much, but there's so much variation and speckling that it was going to be a challenge to do just a stockinette body for me um, and definitely too busy to do a like a textured design or color work. And the reason I didn't want to do stockinette was because I was worried about pooling. And Kelly's yarns are beautiful. They are so stunning. I love her work. I'm just, I'm really lazy and I don't like to variegate or alternate skeins. I really don't like to do it. So I avoid it at all costs. And I do think these actually do go really well together. Let me show you the pink side so instead of the green side. Yeah, so I think these go really well together and the fade I think will work pretty seamlessly if I, um, you know, alternate. And yes, with a fade there is some alternation. I get it, I get it, but it's still better than alternating fingering weight line, you know, row by row. You guys, you, do you know what I'm trying to say? I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense. Um, yeah, so those are yarns that I have taken out of my stash and I'm planning to combine into beautiful cohesive sweaters and again give me some breathing room in these guys because it was a challenge getting my uh, Portland haul into these little cubbies. Yeah. 
Um, but other things that I got recently, oh boy, oh boy. Um, so when I got home from Portland, I saw that I had yarn delivered and I talked about the Explorer Knits one yarn that I had delivered, you know, in the same colorways, but different base, same colorways, but different base. And I would like to point out my friend Megan Kinchenko, she, she got the same colorways and the same base. Like she got home and saw her order was delivered and it was literally the same yarn, base, colorway, everything. And I was like, girl, didn't you remember what you bought? And she's like, I honestly had no idea. <laughs> so I just want to point this out. Uh, by saying I'm not the worst. I'm not the worst. Um, not to say Megan's the worst. Megan's amazing. She's the best. I love her. She's one of my best friends, but um, she definitely didn't remember what yarn she got, and I at least know what yarn I have. Okay, but again, I got home, and I saw I, I had a bunch of yarn delivered, and I was so excited because it was from Scranton Stitcher, and Scranton Stitcher is so lovely. Um, she's actually an attorney too who practiced, uh, I know she does various types of law, but she also did eviction defense at the time that I was doing eviction defense. And, and like we used to vibe about that and talk about that and commiserate. And it's really nice to know another attorney who knits, um, you know, managing the, prof the demands of professional life and also this, you know, all consuming hobby. <laughs> But uh, she also dyes yarn and she's so talented and I wanted her stuff for a long time and I finally uh, bit the bullet and uh, pre-ordered in her most recent Valentine's Day collection. And this is the colorway that I got. It's so pretty. This is her tag by the way, Scrubs and Stitcher. And the colorway is Heart of Gold. And it's so good. It's so good. I love these speckles. I love the tone of it. Like the tonality, I guess I should say, and it'll go great against my skin. And like, I was so excited about this. And then I was trying to put it away in the cubbies when I realized I have the same yarn in fingering weight. This is from The Wandering Flock. <laughs> and this is not to say, this is not to say that either of them are not creative or whatever. Colorways can be similar for many different reasons. I'm not saying that. I this is this comparison is just to point out what a problem I have as a human being. <laughs> like this is so predictable. All that all that trash I was talking to Megan about how I know what yarns I have. Clearly, like mm, do I do I though? Like it's pretty much the same. And I just wanted to point that out because it's just, it was just a really funny moment for me. Um, but I really do love it. Scranton Stitcher is lovely and no regrets. And then I have this. Okay, I'm really glad that the camera is like really struggling with the vibrancy of this because guys, like in real life, it it is so aggressive. Like, I wanted a hot pink, uh, neon hot pink sweater for a long time and um, I'm not brave enough to wear it. So my thought was, okay, if I hold it with a white base, like a white yarn, whether it's DK or fingering, I haven't decided, but if I hold it with something, it'll kind of dampen down the brightness so I'll feel more comfortable wearing it, right? That was my thought. And I'm not sure anything in the world can dampen down this guy. Like, <laughs> it's so bright. I love it though, I'm obsessed. Like. I don't know which cubby to put it in because it's just gonna pop anywhere it goes. Like you, it's like you can see it just like screaming in the screen. And again, this is from Scranton Stitcher as well. And this colorway is called Electric Love, and um, it's a reference to Bob's Burgers, uh, the song sung by Linda's sister. Oh God, what's her name? Gail, Linda's sister Gail, and Mr. Fish Odor. If you guys don't watch Bob's Burgers, you're not gonna understand anything I'm saying. But Bob's Burgers is one of my favorite shows. Um, all the seasons are on Hulu. So if you have Hulu in your region, watch it because it's my favorite show. I love it. Um, but yeah, Electric Love and it is definitely electric. Uh, yeah. And my last yarn acquisition, um, when I was at House of Olive Mode, I showed you guys the two tweeds that I got. It, there was a navy tweed and then this deep red brown 
um, tweed. And I, what I didn't show, tell you guys was I was really struggling because they had this, she had this lovely, lovely, soft, pale pink tweed. And I was really struggling because I wanted it so badly, but I have so much like pink sweaters, especially in like DK and Worsted that I was like, no, 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 I can't do another, can't do another. Um, but it was really a struggle. I, I stood there for like 30 minutes making up my mind on which tweeds to get or not get. And when I got home, I was really glad that I chose not to get that because when I got home, what I saw was my order from Long Dog Yarn was in and it was like the same dang color. <laughs> so again, this is a tweed base. Uh, this colorway is called Sugared Snow, Sugared Snow. And yeah, it's pretty much the same exact color that I was looking at at House of All Mode. So I'm really glad I didn't get it that day because I just would have had two sweater quantities of pretty much the same color on the same base. Um, but yeah, um, I still love it. Sugared Snow, Long Dog Yarn. Very happy that I got it and didn't get the similar yarn at House of All Mode. Um, but yeah, those are all the yarn acquisitions I've got recently, um, and I do have one more thing to show you. And I know this episode's long, um, I hope you guys are sticking around. If not, you know, I, I don't take offense, I don't know when you exit out. Um, but one last thing to show you is I have a ton of stitch markers. So many stitch markers. And, um, I'm gonna make the you know, the thumbnail for this video, me holding stitch markers, because I feel like I hold yarn in like every single one. And like, there's gotta be some way for you guys to differentiate the thumbnails, right? Okay, so stitch markers. The first one, the first maker, I'll say, is Grizzly Knits. So Grizzly Knits, uh, she's one of my viewers and I only discovered her because she tagged me in a photo uh, a story of her watching one of my episodes while working on this set. And it was so beautiful and I'd never seen her work before. And at the time it matched exactly what I was wearing um, and in the story. Um, so I messaged, I checked out her profile and cause I was like, who is this stitch marker maker and why have I never heard of her before? She's based in Canada, so that's probably why I've never heard of her before. We just don't have a lot of overlap in followers and whatever. Um, and I told her that it was amazing how it matched exactly what I was wearing then and I really loved it. And she asked if she could send it to me as a gift. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't, especially for makers, like I don't want to accept gifts because I think it, gives an image that I'm just doing this to get free stuff. And that's definitely not what I'm trying to do uh, at all. I want to pay makers for what they do because they deserve to profit from their wonderful makes. Like that's the whole point of why I, I shop indie, right? Um, so I told her, no, 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 I don't feel comfortable with gifts. Um, but I did check out her Etsy and I said, I'm planning on buying stuff because she kind of insisted and she was really sweet about it too. And anyway, so I said, I'm going to buy stuff from your shop. And if you insist on putting the set that it was in your stories inside, you know, I obviously won't send it back, but I'm buying stuff. And I did. So what I bought was this beautiful progress marker. And I don't have a lot of progress markers. Um, but especially when I'm in a knitting slump, I find that they help. So progress marker, stunning with a little heart. I think it's super feminine and cute. And um, this stitch marker set, um, I really love it, um, love it. And then of course she included this as a gift because that's how I discovered her. And I really hope you guys check out her profile um, and her Etsy shop, it's really cute. And again, everybody will be linked in the, in the description below. But yeah, so that's, that's from her, Grizzly. And thank you so much for, for being sweet and making wonderful things that I can share with other people. So that's from her. Um, the next is from Hello Lavender. So this was in her, like her old favorites restock or pre-order and some new stuff too. So I'll show you the restock ones. So I have both of these sets, the, the Duomo set from her Italy collection with Explorin' It's 
I can flip it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is a Duomo. And I have this one, but the the outside rim, the ring, the pink ring, it broke. It broke. And it happens, and I'm not the most delicate person. I tend to, um, I don't move with grace. I'm pretty clunky in my movements. So I just, I hit it against something, and I, anyway. Yeah, and then this one is the eucalyptus one from her houseplant series, and I have eucalyptus as well. I just, I was so worried if it breaks because it's one of my absolute favorite stitch markers. I use it all the time, and I was just so worried something would happen to it, so that's why I got the extra. Just like I had to get another of Duomo because something did happen to it, and it broke my heart. So I'm really glad that she did that because now I feel comforted knowing my favorites will you know still be with me for many more years of making I hope and then the only new one I got from her was this set um this was inspired by a, a set of Corel plates and um I thought it was super cute first off like the look wise but also that she matched it to like the set of plates that she used to use when she was younger because when I was young my mother had a set of like the white Corel plates with um, blue flower motif. And I kind of want to, I want to find it again because um, I just, I want things that remind me of her, you know? Um, so I thought this was very cute and a, a nice way for her, for Reshma of Hello Lavender to uh, pay homage to something from her childhood. Um, sorry. Um, well, I'm gonna have to fish that out. One second. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then the other stuff I got is from Denim and Rain, and there's a lot. She I, she included some stuff as gifts, so there's a lot. Um, the first set I'll show you is this one. And she was having a sale, which is why I got uh, some, a lot, some, some a lot. Yeah, so she was having a 15% off sale to make room for new stuff. and. This is one of the sets. It's really pretty. It has flecks of gold in it. I love this look and I love gold. Um, yeah. She makes buttons too. And the reason I discovered her was my friend, Andrea of the Knitting PT. She got a bunch of her buttons for one of her projects that she was working on. And it looks so pretty. And I was like, who's that maker? Like, let me know that maker. I asked her like four times because I just kept forgetting to save it like a dummy. But yeah, um, then I have this gorgeous progress marker. Obviously it's a little bit heavier, so I can't put it on a fingering weight sweater without it making the, the stitch stretched out. But on our worsted weight, like the Malina was, it'll be totally fine. Um, but it has pressed flowers in it. And actually when I was younger, when I would visit Korea, I would go to this place that specialized in like crafting with pressed flowers and dried flowers. and. Um, it's one of my like favorite childhood memories. I would love to do that again. So yeah, I, I love flowers. I love flowers. Um, then there's this one, which is snowflakes. And I love the way that looks. It's a very wintry one, obviously, because of the snowflakes, but I think it's super cute. And I, every year I tell myself, this is the year I'll make a Christmas sweater. And perhaps this year is the year I make a Christmas sweater. Um, and if I do, I'll use those stitch markers, okay? Then there's this guy. This is a single one, but it's very dramatic, so it stands by itself. I just really love this, like, enamel look. And I love the layering of the speckles. This one has silver in it, and it's really pretty. And then she threw in these as extras for me. I actually, I want to include this in my 10,000 follower give giveaway on Instagram, which is coming up. I think I'm at like 9,600 followers and I'm almost at, you know, I'm getting pretty close to 10K and that's like crazy to me, crazy. Um, like 10K was my goal for my birthday and that's the end of July. So anyway, I just, yeah, obviously this episode's getting long because I don't want to get too far into it again, but truly and honestly, if you had told me a year ago when I started this podcast expecting 10 views, like, that this would become what it is now, I would not have believed it. I still kind of don't believe it, 
Um, I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for watching and I'm sorry that, you know, I broke out in stress highs. <laughs> I'm less stressed now. I think I just, like, my body was, like, so tense over the past six months of, you know, dealing with the anniversary of my mom's death and then uh, breaking up with my ex and then, you know, starting a new job. Like, everything was just, like, we're in go-go-go mode and then once now that I'm settling into things, it's like... <sighs> Uh, and it, the way that it released was in stress hives, so sorry about that. Um, but I'm knitting, I'm really happy to be knitting, um, I'm happy to be back, and I hope to show you guys many, many more makes as the weeks go on, and um, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other, and thanks for watching, bye!